Welcome to this demonstration of high trust key control for VMware vSphere. In this demo, I'm going to showcase the deployment and configuration procedure of high trust key control product as an encryption key management service solution that can be used for both vSphere VM encryption and vSAN encryption. The Hytros Key Control product uh, is available in a virtual appliance format, uh, typically packaged in the VMware native sort of OVA format. So in typical VMware fashion, we go through the process of importing or deploying an OVF template, as you can see here, uh, going through the wizard procedure, providing name, uh, selecting the resources, uh, and also identifying onto which uh, cluster or which particular host you may want these particular appliances to be deployed onto. Now, one thing that's unique here is that you see the different configuration settings, recommended, demo, or a large type of deployment. Either way here, the changes and the differences are uh, the compute uh, settings, which are applied onto the appliance once it's deployed. You can then select the type of data store you want to deploy the appliance onto. Here, I'm going to choose a vSAN data store with a particularly highly available and efficient uh, layout. Uh, select the network onto which this particular appliance is going to be part of. Uh, provide the customized sort of uh, unique network or TCP IP properties that are applicable to that particular appliance. Now you can verify it in all the settings where are going to be now part of that appliance. We can take a look at here at the process of the deployment. Uh, you can track it in terms of the recent tasks. And you can see the sort of importation of that particular appliance. Once completed, we're then able to uh, go on to the appliance itself and part it on. Once the appliance is powered on, we have an IP address where we can actually hit an address. Once you have access to the appliance, the first things we have to do is provide a new password so that we can gain access to. Once the password is added, the key control appliance is configured. Here there's an IP address where you actually go on to and finish up the actual configuration from a browser. Now, from the browser perspective, all you do is log on to the browser user interface, uh, accept the EULA. Here, you'll be asked to change the password for security reasons. Once the password is changed, um, you'll see that you get access to whether you want to configure email or, or mail server setting alerts. That's something that I'll skip here. Now, to provide the actual configuration for the key settings and the key uh, components, uh, there's a couple of unique items here. So, number one, we go to the basics. Uh, tab once logged into the uh, the appliance and we have to enable the state this particular service here which actually is running on on a specific port port 5696 once enabled uh, we'll select the supported protocol that is going to work for vSphere which is version 1.1 1 .1. Uh, once that's done we can basically apply and override the default settings that are part of the uh, KMIP sort of server settings there, as you can see there. Uh, the next step is to actually create uh, the particular vSphere account or the vSphere user type of account that's going to be utilized to add the key management server to the infrastructure, to the vSphere infrastructure. So here I'm creating a particular username. Uh, you can change the, uh, the certification expiration date if you want to. I'm going to make this a little longer. And one of the requirements here is to actually not provide a password for this particular user as it will be handled directly from uh, within the vSphere infrastructure. Once a user account is created, uh, we want to go into select the account and at this particular point go to the actions and download the certificate so that we can then utilize them once we're going through the process of adding uh, the KMS service server to vCenter. So here you can see how I downloaded the actual certificates. I'm going to go into a zip file and here you can see the two uh, certificates that are, that are packaged as part of the, the user configuration. Now at this point we basically can move on to the vSphere side of the infrastructure and sort of proceed with the configuration of the key management service. Here I will navigate to the vCenter server uh, going into the uh, configuration tab and in this particular case uh, I'll be able to select the key management servers that are to be added onto the system here. So very quickly, uh, select key, uh, add KMS. Uh, here obviously you can see that uh, there's a level, a number of fields to be filled out. Here I provide a, a name, the way in, in which the 
server will be identified within the infrastructure, the actual port, and you can see how quickly here the, uh, the server connection is made. And now you can actually say trust the key. But in order to actually get this working correctly, we're going to have to have vCenter trust, uh, the, uh, trust the, certifi the certificate being provided by the, by the management server here. And to do that, we're going to establish a trust between the key certificates. So we're going to upload the certificates in the private key as it says here. In this particular case, I'm going to upload the user certificate that was created in the previous steps, right? And you can see now that the key is validated here. You can see the name of the actual user. And we'll do that once again to validate the uh, trust relationship. Once that is done, you can quick, quickly click OK, and you'll see that um, now the uh, connection has been established. Everything is normal. All the certificates are trusted. And at this point, you are actually able to now begin to either do one or two, one of two things. You can at this point navigate to the cluster uh, level, uh, move on to the configure tab, and if you want to utilize or enable vSAN encryption, now you'll be able to do so very effectively and very quickly. So here you go to the edit settings. The cluster obviously, obviously is already configured and enabled. Notice that here all I have to do is enable encryption. The key, uh, the KMS cluster uh, or the appliance as I deployed is presented here. And I can choose to uh, enable encryption and also erase disks before they use, which means uh, there's going to be a formatting process that's going to take place in a sort of evacuation on from a vSAN perspective from the disk groups, the individual objects, in order to apply the encryption. Now, this is something that can take quite a bit of time. You can see that the server has been selected, and you can see the formatting process here uh, for the disks in particular, uh, as it pertains to vSAN, has already begun, and you can track that process there. Now, that's going to take some time, and vSAN uh, types of uh, the, the data store is going to be encrypted. But now, let's go on to a particular virtual machine and utilize the VM encryption uh, level which is available at, uh, directly in vSphere. So by simply changing the policy on this particular virtual machine, instead of using the data store default, we're going to go here and utilize the default VM encryption policy that is available within vSphere. As you can see here, I'm going to apply it to both uh, the virtual machine's uh, home directory as well as the disk and apply it at that level. And particularly here, the virtual machine is powered off. Uh, and then just to track the sort of status of what's happening through the encryption process, uh, you can see here you can track both the vSAN clusters being formatted to adopt the new encryption key services and the new capabilities while the virtual machine has already been sort of uh, formatted. In this particular case, the VMS off. Now, keep in mind that the preparation of the vSAN cluster will take a lot longer because of the offloading and formatting of the objects and the disks. Whereas for the individual virtual machines, this process could be done uh, a lot quicker uh, as the actual VMDKs are being formatted. And that's about it. Thank you for watching.